Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Sir Wonderbeard and today I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about uh, my alpha playthrough with Rend. Um, it was an alpha so of course some issues were expected, um, however I did have a lot of fun with it. I was able to lose a lot of time into the game in a very short matter of time. Uh, I probably spent overall about uh, 12 to 15 hours in a matter of like two or three days playing the alpha. I played it bits and pieces here and there, of course, have to work and do the daily grind like an adult, but overall had a lot of fun with it. Uh, as you can see, I was kind of messing around with the resolution on the game's menu itself, and I did notice some issues with that currently. I mean, like I said, it's an alpha, so those are kind of expected, but when you're selecting resolutions, anything that was over... Uh, pretty much 1050 would cause some of the actual screen to be cut off and anything lower would actually make the game go into like a windowed mode. It wasn't fully windowed mode because it said it was full screen but it essentially did go into a windowed mode which well it, it caused a little bit of problems but luckily with it being in alpha they're gonna work through these. The developers are very open with their fans and they do communicate very well. Uh, I also got to stay on the Discord, uh, which is just a chat server for those of you that don't know, uh, for Alpha, which had developers and everything else. So you were able to actually communicate, get some of the problems across, and kind of talk about a lot of that stuff with them, of everything kind of going on, any bugs you may have found. Uh, it was honestly a really great experience and was a lot of fun. Um, overall, I would say the game has a lot of potential. Um, it's it's still a little bit a little bit away from where it needs to be, but again, I mean we are in alpha, so there's no reason to you know worry about it too much or anything else. And like I said, I had a lot of fun. Um, as you can see here, the selection for uh, finding servers is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, I did just go with the official servers, and the reason I didn't show you any of the uh, character customization is it's actually pretty simple you choose you know male or female and then there's about 10 different hairstyles and 10 different beard styles and um, you can sit there and go through and you know choose whatever you want and they actually have some that you can unlock um, just through playing with what they call ascension perks um, you get these points just simply by playing the game and after you level up to a certain point you end up just basically getting extra perk points. Uh, right now um, you can see that the game is actually really beautiful, has great graphics. Um, I believe it is running off the Unreal Engine. So of course with the Unreal Engine pretty much most games run off of that nowadays, uh, that or the Crytek one, but this game was really beautiful in itself. Here you can see that there are some tools. Uh, they have a hatchet, they have a hammer, a sickle, and then the last one is a pick. Um, each of them are for different things. Um, obviously the axe is for chopping down trees and collecting wood and stuff. And you can see the different motions that my character is making right now. Um, he will, you know, sometimes will chop kind of in a sideways motion or a top down motion. Um, the game varies very nicely by having it to where you can left click and your character will harvest certain elements that way. Or you can right click and it'll harvest different ones. Sometimes you'll get similar things, but mainly it's kind of that back and forth. Uh, the game is a survival game at heart, um, so it's kind of nice that you get to go through and you know you got to collect food, you have to drink water, and most games that have that kind of survival element, having the water is kind of tough because you always have to have a certain way of filtering it or anything else. With Rand, you find a water hole, you drink from it, your max and you're good to go. Um, the menu system, the inventory system is well laid out, um, very well laid out actually, very simply done. Um, it goes from your weapons to your tools to like your consumables, your ammo, and also all, all of your other stuff, just kind of the normal junk and whatnot you collect through any other kind of game. As you can see also the crafting system is quite in-depth. I mean they kind of show you the basics to begin with and kind of handhold a little bit but overall there's not really a full-on tutorial for the game you just kind of are thrown in and you're left to try and survive which is honestly great and a lot of games are kind of doing that nowadays which 
is nice. It's it's a change from where games were starting to go, where it was, hey, here's your marker, hey, do this, hey, do this, and kind of lead you the entire way. Uh, that doesn't happen with this game. It's You're figuring out a lot of things on your own, and it makes it a lot of fun. It makes you really want to keep pursuing and keep doing things like that, and it's, it's really nice. Um, overall, the game has a lot of survival elements. It has RPG elements. You can choose a couple of different classes. There's four of them. Uh, which you'll see here coming up. Um, it'll be uh, one's like a warlord class, or your standard kind of warrior. One is a pathfinder, and then there's a magic wielder, and then there's another one that I just I can't remember, but we'll go ahead and see it here pretty soon. Uh, the combat is pretty fun. The only con against I guess the combat overall is kind of the lack of melee weapons. Uh, it seems to focus primarily around ranged using bows, crossbows, repeaters, um, pretty much anything in regards to that kind of stuff. There's, as far as I know, no throwing weapons or anything else, which is okay, but the lack of melee weapons kind of, in my opinion, hurts a little bit because I would like to, you know, run around with a axe or something else and, you know, fight that way and not have to completely depend on having a bow, having the ammo, having arrows. And you'll see kind of later on where, you know, I'll be fighting a wolf and you end up not doing much damage unless you pull out your bow and actually start shooting them. Uh, the nice thing this game does as well, as you can see, as you are doing different things, collecting different resources, you have, um, you know, your, from your woodcraft to your metallurgy, you know, mining different metals and ores, to how you're shooting with your bow, to different construction, adventuring. Uh, you actually have different perks that you can put into that it makes you better overall as a character, but also while doing those different things. Uh, right here is a very cool thing that I think uh, is very unique to pretty much anything I've ever seen. The game uses these sparks, um, essentially these little uh, circular runes, I guess is what you'd call them. They're used for doing research for your overall faction. Uh, there's three different factions. One of them is Order, another is Revenant, and then Covenant. I ended up choosing Covenant because, well, my favorite color is green, so I stuck with the green. And it really honestly kind of helps with some griefing issues that some big MMOs have and everything else. And it's nice, you know, you have allies around at all times. Here's the talent tree. Uh, you can see that I chose Pathfinder, but you also have the ability to choose a second class, essentially, to kind of make things a little more unique for yourself. And as you can see, it has a full-on talent tree. Uh, over here, uh, I have now been over-encumbered because I collected too much. Uh, I can't run. Well, you can run up to a certain point. Eventually, the game will actually just stop you in your tracks and you're just kind of stuck there and it's like you're you know feet are in concrete and you can't move um, otherwise you're you go a lot slower once you're over encumbered um, you still have the ability to run but much slower uh, if you're going you know uphill it's even slower than that or anything else right here you get to see a little combat uh, I got attacked by a wolf kind of freaked out a little bit and had my hammer out and then realized oh I'm not doing much damage and as you can see, once I pulled the bow out, I actually started doing a really good chunk of damage. The combat is really fun. Um, I expect that to eventually... I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but it's it's kind of exciting to see you know if they happen to add more to it or anything else. If you do happen to get damaged and get any wounds, um, as you saw, I got rid of it, but there was uh, deep wounds that I got from you know the claw marks, and... If you don't have bandages, you eventually will bleed out if the wound is too severe, so you kind of have to have bandages. There are these gold poppy petals that you have to go collect. They just look like a little golden flower on the ground. Uh, you know, it'll be a big bunch of them, and you collect those, harvest those, and you're able to make bandages, different healing salves, um, different things like that. And another cool thing about this game is if you're carrying meat or if you're... Um, harvesting an animal and collecting their guts and stuff, it actually will ha cause other predators to come towards you and try and you know hone in on you. Um, as you saw that tree back there, that really giant tree, uh, that is the I really don't know what it's called. 
um, but that is kind of like your GPS in the game. There is no real map, so you basically, depending on where you are, um, which faction you are, various things like that, you basically look at the tree. For us, on the Covenant side, it happened to be they. the tree is directly north, so you kind of judge your position based off that and kind of go around and figure out where you're going based on that, which sometimes causes some confusion and you do tend to get lost from time to time. Um, in the game, like I said, it does a very good job of taking away griefing. You are in this faction, so there's always going to be players and friendly players around helping you out. You can kill people in your faction, however, it's not really recommended. You lose faction points, you lose standing. It ends up being a lot harder to overall just play the game when you're against your own faction, which makes sense. I mean, you're just kind of on your own at that point. Uh, the different factions create a PvP siege kind of element to where every once in a while, every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, uh, one of the outposts for a random faction will actually drop, which means that all the players from other factions can now siege this place, which can cause some crazy PvP events. There are some NPCs that will attack. Uh, it ends up being a really fun element. I didn't end up getting any footage of that because at the time... Uh, the game was really laggy and I was having some desync issues, which seems to kind of be commonplace with it. Uh, right here I just kind of fast forwarded through uh, me building a little personal base, which is also a very cool thing in the game. Uh, if you've ever played Rust or really any other survival game, you're able to go through and build and you know harvest and do that kind of stuff, but that deteriorates over time which in this case is is the same kind of thing. It does deteriorate over time. However, you can place what's called a lesser divinity stone. And what it does is it's essentially a tree. Uh, it's, it's a small version of that big tree that you saw. And you end up planting it in the middle of your base, and it essentially acts like your, your anchor in the world to where your base won't deteriorate. It'll just be there, and you're able to actually just you know, build upon it, keep fortifying your base, and, you know, just continuing to make things better for your base. It's a really nice way of doing it. I haven't seen the, you know, the PvP elements with personal bases. I don't know if when there's a siege or anything going on, if people can just go to your base and blow it up. Well, not that there's any bombs or anything, but, you know, siege your base or, you know, destroy it or do anything like that. I don't know if there's that in the game, but, you know, if there is, it's kind of like anything else out there with Rust or, you know, things like that. Um, my biggest complaints, like I said, are kind of the things I talked about. Desync issues, lots of lag, um, a lot of the harvestable elements, trees, rocks, plants, they disappear from time to time. Kind of, kind of causes some confusion and issues. Uh, the lack of melee weapons hurts, but uh, some of the alpha issues that, you know, they're expected. Uh, overall, the game does have great graphics, well-organized menu system. The crafting is very in-depth. It has pretty simple home base building, and the overall building mechanic for the game is pretty simple and fun to use. Uh, the combat is really fun. With the archery, it makes you have to be pretty precise and pinpoint with your shots. I've noticed that you can also shoot animals in specific places and they do have weak points to where you can get criticals and everything else so that's kind of a nice thing and then there are original creature designs um, all the creatures i mean minus wolves wolves are pretty standard and pretty simply done in most games but all the creatures are very beautifully designed all very unique the environments are also very beautiful unique and they're original to the you know to the game itself uh, the game is a definitely a true survival game at heart doesn't really hold your hand, and I, I tend to enjoy that a little bit more. It's fun to play. Uh, you end up losing a lot of time um, just into the game, just from simply playing, because it's so enjoyable. And everything takes time to build upon and everything else. It does have full day and night cycles, uh, which you'll see a little bit later on. It is very nice, um, and the cool thing is, about at the night time when it happens, there are these little will-o'-the-wisp or little fairy kind of glowing orbs that'll be kind of around. Um, they are actually spirits. You collect those at night, hit them with your spirit weapons, that's your, your tools, your axe, your pick, your scythe, those things. 
you harvest those, you put them into your main base at night, and on that big tree you see, it actually has a bar that fills up. The team that does that quickest ends up, I don't know what happens, but some people have told me that it's winning, but I don't know what winning is overall in it. Maybe the faction gets a boost for however long until the next time it happens, or maybe it's like a tournament type of thing. Um, overall, I do recommend the game. It's a lot of fun. And I would give it 7.5 Disappearing Trees out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.